In this video, I'll go over how to set up a new project in Beatographer. Right now I'm using it as a free user, but the setup for paid members is about the same. So first you can put it in title. And actually this isn't relevant for people using it for free because it's at this point that the project either saves or it doesn't. So if you're using it as a paid member, it will auto save the project and you'll be able to come back and edit this information if you start working on something and then you want to change the size of the canvas or even the stitch. You can do that. But if you're using it for free and you're not logged in, as I'm not now, it won't have an option to save it later. So please keep that in mind if you're just experimenting with it. Don't spend a lot of time on a pattern that you want to keep. Uh, you can take a screenshot but you won't be able to upgrade to paid membership after you've created a pattern because it won't save anything unless you're logged in. So if you are a paid member, naming your projects is a really good habit to get into so that you can find your projects more easily. Next, you can choose your bead library, and this is where you pick the brand, the shape, and the size of your beads. And right now we've got three sizes of Miyuki round beads, four sizes of Miyuki Delicas, four sizes of Toho Round, Toho Ico 11s, Toho Treasure 11s, and Fuse Beads, which include Perler, Hama, and Art Cal Beads. When you pick your library, so for example, I'll go Toho Round 11, that means the program will load in all the Toho Round 11 products that are in the bead library so that you can use actual products in your design. You can look up the products by the product code, do a search for product code, or you can set a shade, play around with sliders and, and find a color that you like, and then look up actual products that are close matches. Next you can choose a pattern or a stitch. Right now we've got loom, brick, two drop brick, three drop brick, peyote, two drop peyote, three drop peyote, herringbone, right angle weave, triangle, weichel, and medallion. Now both the bead libraries and the, the stitches we're going to be adding to as we go, and we'll be looking to our users on what they want added, so let us know if there's something that you want to see in here and we'll factor that in as we continue to develop. Next you can specify the row and column numbers and set the project up at the beginning. Now you can see here, there's the project size, and that takes all this information into account. So check the project size as I change the type of beads. You see it's changed. I'll change the stitch. You see that's changed. I'll change the row number. It changes again. So it auto-calculates, and that can be useful if you know what size you want the project to be at the start, and you can play around until you get the right dimensions. Finally, if there's a size or shape bead that is not in the library that you want to use, um, you do have a little bit of flexibility with that. You can use a custom bead size, and if you know what the measurements are, you can put it in in millimeters or inches, and then just as long as the diameter is not more than twice the width of the bead, you should be okay. So let's, let's try 10 and five, and that should give us some really skinny beads. Let's launch that, and you'll see, here we go. <laughs> These are very wide, skinny beads, and that's reflected in the palette as well. So that's how to set up a new project. Let us know if you have any questions.